it's a balancing act to get this camera sitting up like that on a bit post. <sighs> anyway, it's your old pal Overland Millet here. Hope you're going well. I'm keeping good in Belgrade. And um, today it's uh, the 23rd anniversary of the passing of uh, Michael Hutchins. And this is kind of like wanting me to sit down and start telling people like, Martin, what were you really like before you were a metalhead? Okay, I tell you a few things, right? Okay, um, I discovered music when I was like eight years old. Uh, I can clearly remember having to do line dancing to climb and use a locomotion in 1993. Um, then I, t I clearly remember climbing videos coming up on TV in 1994. And then I didn't hear anything about it until 1997. Um, yeah, so. I pretty much listened to Carmen Oak on again, off again from like 2000, sorry, 1993 till like 2008. I mean, there was like times when I was listening to her. Uh, but you know, I, just, I had like Kylie, um, X, Blind Language, uh, yeah. So yeah, I was a Kylie fan until 2008, and yeah, everyone has a story about the whole Dream Theater thing. Um, uh, other types of, like, horrible, like, I would literally listen to top 40 music, um, I would be really wild at all the shitty pop songs, but then, I grew up with a brother who was always playing Queen, Bon Jovi, Smashing Pumpkins, Nirvana, um, alternative music, like, both of my brothers were into alternative music, and then, years later, my oldest brother, like, got into Dream Theater. Yeah, and, and also my both my brothers went to the offspring. I can stand the offspring. God, that's awful. Yeah, I, I used to listen to Olivia and John <laughs> when I was like eighteen or nineteen. Then I just realized when I was like nineteen, this is shit. This isn't really rock and roll. Um, yeah, and then literally like a year later, I became a metalhead. But in, in other things, um, my first CD I ever was given was Bee Gees One Night Only Live in Las Vegas. It was given to me Christmas Day, nineteen ninety eight, and I was actually just watching that concert like last Christmas in London. I always had a lot of respect for the Bee Gees, no matter if they weren't really that rock music. But um, which be any metal musician like these days who sings pretty high, well, you can thank the Bee Gees for that. But yeah, VG's never really been a rock band, a rock group. Uh, what else did I have? Mm, I'm trying to think. Uh, who else? Did I... um, the funny thing was, like, Damon Ogg, right? I I first heard Damon Ogg before I heard of Quietly. I always thought Damon Ogg was very attractive. I've kissed Damon Ogg once. Um, I, I remember when I was like 13, me and my mates were listening to all what I'm doing, we're playing, it was a fucking. Air, air guitar I'm playing around. But, uh, just Damon Nogue, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> she lives in the shadows of Kylie, and that's fucking stupid, even though she was, um, singing before Kylie. So, initially, Damon Nogue should be fucking selling a lot more records and all, and a lot more popular, but, uh, such is life, yeah. Um, i trying to think. Yeah, so, anyway, like, um, when my brother bought me a U2 album, uh, How Does This Man Only Time Bomb, that basically got me into the, like, um, world of rock music. Like, there was, like, U2, Bon Jovi, Bruce Springsteen. I listened to a lot of that when I was 19, going on 20. And then way before the Heavy Metal Days. Um, in high school, I like Midnight Oil, even though they were pretty old. And my brother once said to me, Mark Midnight Oil's crap, listen to something else. But, you know, Midnight mean, Oil were really political. Um, but after Peter Garrett left, I was kind of like, you know, I'm fucking over Midnight Oil. And then he became a politician, a bit of an embarrassment. Uh, when Michael Legends died when I was like 12, I kind of like made me want to listen to In Excess. I never owned an In Excess album in my life. I never saw In Excess live in concert. Um, but then it's kind of funny how, like, people in... My genre and heavy metal are basically, they do have some in excess albums in their collection. And even Necro Bookshelf Mayhem has big, is a big fan of the fucking Aussies. 
as he actually bought an excess's kick. And uh, yeah, because I mean, my collection's anniversary is a couple of days after my, my, after my birthday. And so that's like why like, I can never really forget it. Um, yeah. But then, you see, after the whole Dream Thug concert that happens in uh, January 2008, I just started, I was still walking the path of uh, heavy metal, but then, like, I literally had maybe 20 or so metal CDs, like, I mean, I had my Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, um, Black Sabbath, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth, De Def Leppard, give or take. Um, still have my YouTube albums, still have my Bruce Springsteen albums. Uh, I didn't have any Luna and John albums at the time, I tell you that, that was very important. Uh, but then I, I literally, I think around um, 2008, I also, like at the start, before the Jonathan concert, I think I, I, I must have had at least three Kyle Minogue albums in my collection, but then. All of a sudden, that Dream Theater concert, the I Made concert, and then buying that Queen's Radio album made me just want to smash a climate the album in, uh, in the backyard. It's so funny. Um, and also, uh, Madonna, yeah. I, I actually listened to a lot of Madonna when I was like uh, 18, I don't know, it was like 19, going 20, but then Madonna didn't want to come to Australia, so I actually told her to get fucked, and uh, you can read a, a, a vlog I did on me on stage in lines and talking about Madonna. I actually had like four Madonna albums in my collection, and uh, the most embarrassing one is actually Erotica because Doug Wimbish of uh, Living Color plays bass on that album. And one time, uh, personal reasons, uh, I was having a online cyber session with this American chick, like 40 years old, just playing that Madonna music in the background, telling me how cute I am, watching my webcam and seeing my genitals and all, and making me cringe and crinkle like a leaf. Yeah. So, like, literally, I mean, like, I will I tell people, like, you know, like, heavy metal's been an important part of my 15 years, but I wasted 12 years of my life listening to pieces of shit. Like, you know, fucking Carl Minogue, Luther and John, Celine Dion, Delta Goodrum, Madonna. And then as soon as I found my good mate, Metal Steve, um, in this restaurant, uh, we used to sit around and, like, on our smoko breaks. So, or just between shifts, and we used to talk shit about these women. We used to be like, uh, Delta Goodrum sucks, you can't play a guitar, uh, Little John uh, isn't really rock and roll, uh, Climb and I's got too many gay backup dancers and needs some more guitar solos, uh, Madonna's a heap of shit. <laughs> and you know, I would say these just out of the blue at them, and it was just fun and hilarious. <laughs> I mean, literally, like, Stephen and I, we've been fr friends now for, like, 12 years, and normally, uh, I should go visit him in Canada, uh, but normally he, he comes to visit me in the pubs in, like, uh, London, and <laughs> we, like, we always reflect about all those good times we had, even in that shit whole job at Tequila's on Main. Uh, yeah, so, um, but anyway, there's a lot of women that I do like to think dearly that I, I think I'm quite proud of, like, owning... Like the records, um, definitely Hart, Stevie Nicks, Linda Ronston, uh, Pat Benatar, um, definitely Sandy Denny. She inspired me to stay in the UK and not get back to Australia. Um, Kate Bush, always had a soft spot for Kate Bush, lovely artist, very enclosed. Um, yeah, and uh, see who, who else has been quite off? Not sure. Um, yeah, and also, I mean, and then you gotta remember all the hard rock bands like you know, Foreigner and Styx, all them recently. But like, since I emigrated to the United Kingdom, I've kind of been listening to a lot more prog and a lot more glam in the 1970s because it's, it's those bands that influenced all the bands I love for the 80s and onwards. So, anyway, Overland Mel had done his rant and has gotten things off his chest. He's proud of what he's been listening to in the last 15 years, but deeply regrets all the bullshit that I listened to between 8 and. 19. Just. Please just knock it off with those kind of jokes. I don't like and John jokes. It makes me sick, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, of course, I did see Lou and John, but um, I uh, fell asleep at the concert. And um, I only went there to see uh, Andy Timmons at Danger Danger. <laughs> anyway, over and out.